Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to create a graphic novel using Photoshop's built-in tools and the plugins from Digital Anarchy. This is an introduction to the technique showing what we'll be doing without going into that much detail. In later segments, we'll go in-depth and show exactly how we created each portion of the effect. So let's get into it. There are a couple ways of approaching creating this effect. You can shoot everything all at once, taking your talent or model out to the location, shooting it as a single image, and then cartooning it. Or you can shoot everything separately, cartoon them, and then composite them together. For a couple reasons, I prefer the latter approach, shooting everything separately. First off, getting the talent and location together can be pretty difficult. You may want to shoot in the desert and live in Seattle. Secondly, the background and foreground usually work a lot better with different settings. The settings you're going to use on the foreground subject is going to have a lot more detail than probably what you want in the background. So having them separate gives you a lot more flexibility. So this is the method that we'll discuss in these tutorials, shooting everything separately. As mentioned, this is an overview, so we're not going to go into every last detail. I'll show you what the different pieces are, how they fit together, and leave the in-depth details for later segments. So let's talk about the main subject. In this case, it's a pixie that's in a fighting mood. She's shot against a green screen, and I can switch over to the original photo and show you exactly what that looked like at the start. And so you can see she shot against a green screen. We've used Primat and Photoshop's tools to create a mask, which you can see here. We've then taken that and dropped it into our main composition, where we're going to combine her with the final background. Now, of course, you don't need to use Primat. Uh, you can use any masking tool that's available to you. Certainly, Photoshop has the extract command. There's other plugins like Mass Pro from On One Software. All of these are good solutions. You don't necessarily need to have a green screen. For example, you might want to shoot against white and then use Mass Pro from On One to pull the key. But you can use whatever method works for you. One thing that does work to our advantage is that since we're going to be cartooning this, the mask doesn't have to be as perfect as it normally would have to be. Tune it and the process of cartooning will hide some mask flaws. So that makes things a little bit easier for us. But regardless of whatever method you use to create the mask, the point is that we get our subject masked out and on a separate layer in Photoshop. So you can see I've got my pixie here and she's floating on her own little layer and we can move her around however we see fit. And so we can now come in and apply Tunit to her. We'll go down to Digital Anarchy, go to Tunit. I'll bring up my Tunit interface. And just to make things easier, I already have a preset for this. So we'll select the Tutorial Foreground. And I'll give my Pixie the right shading and outlines and we can go ahead and apply that and so the preset gives us a pretty good render now in other segments of this tutorial we will go in depth as to what all those settings do and why we chose specific settings for that preset but since this is just an overview we're going to kind of skip that part and just discuss the other pieces and so that brings us to the background which is our forest scene here we have the pixie here guarding this path. And in this case, I've used an image from iStock Photo. Of course, you can use an image from anywhere. But I find iStock Photo to be a great resource. One interesting thing about this, since we are cartooning this, you don't need a high resolution image. We can always scale this up, and indeed that's what we did. The original photo of this background is actually about a fourth of the size of this image. And you can see that I've scaled it up. It's actually, the image is actually pretty soft. But since we're going to cartoon this, and it's a background image anyways, so we want to have less detail in it, if you're buying from my stock photo, you can just buy usually the smallest size, 
and just scale it up. And so it really becomes an inexpensive solution to finding the right backgrounds. But either way, I think it was a lot easier than traveling to Ireland or somewhere to shoot this. Although if you have the budget to travel to Ireland, then of course I highly recommend that you do that. In any event, we have a forest background, which we will also tune. You'll usually want less detail in the background than in the foreground. And so when I go in to tune this, again, I'll come down to Digital Anarchy and select Tune It. I've got a different preset for my background. And you'll notice this has a whole lot of details, lots of outlines. And when I select the background preset, you'll notice that it has significantly less detail in it. And we'll go ahead and click OK and render that out. So now we have the background with different settings than the foreground. And that's really the big advantage to doing things separately is the ability to have lots of detail on our foreground subject and much less on the background. So now we can start trying to tie this all together. So now to blend the pixie into the scene a little bit better, we need to give her a shadow. And the easiest way to do that is to duplicate this layer. And we're going to use hue and saturation to turn it completely black. And we'll put that behind her. And we'll use the distort command to now distort that. And we're going to distort it to make it look like it's laying on the ground. And we'll hit OK. And that'll apply the distortion. And now we'll come in and apply a Gaussian blur to it to give it more of a shadow look. And that blurs it out, and we'll adjust the opacity down a bit. And that'll give us a halfway decent shadow. Obviously, with a little bit more work, we could make it look a little bit more perfect. But for the time being, that's just fine. So that gives us our ground shadow. And now we'll use No Light Factory to add some special effects. Now, in this case, I'm just going to turn on some pre-rendered layers. I'm not actually going to dive into No Light Factory. Again, that's going to be another segment where we break down how we created these effects. So we're going to give her Staff of Power a uh, some bite. And we'll also add a little bit of a glow to her eye. And so both of those elements were created with No Light Factory. And because that requires a little bit of explaining, we'll save all of that for a further segment. But for now, that gives us a pretty good image. We can use this for the cover image of our graphic novel. In the next segments, we'll go over exactly how we created each element and then discuss how to make panels for our different scenes, text bubbles, and a variety of other effects using Photoshop's tools that will really add to our graphic novel. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Check out www.digitalanarchy.com for a lot more tutorials, free demo filters, and a lot of other good stuff. Obviously, there will be more segments of this tutorial explaining exactly how the elements were created and a little bit more info on putting them all together. So definitely check out the Digital Anarchy website, and thank you for joining me.